We will carry out the rigging in the following sequence. First will be the propeller governor, then the fuel condition lever, and finally the power lever. The propeller levers should have a similar travel with no lever stagger. If the cockpit lever travels are different, then the position of the speed setting levers should be examined to ensure that they are both set at exactly the same position. On this aircraft, there was a mismatch in the propeller lever angles. Match both lever knobs and apply the friction locks. Disconnect the rod end from the speed setting lever and physically position the propeller lever to match the sister engine at the maximum position. Adjust one or both levers, if necessary, to obtain the same lever angle. Follow the aircraft maintenance manual recommendation, if not specified, use a sister engine's lever angle as the reference. Adjust the rod end to match the new lever position and install the bolt as a sliding fit. The speed setting lever on the governor should contact both the maximum and the feathering stops on the governor when the cockpit levers are moved from feather to maximum position. Examine both governor levers to confirm that the lever angles are the same. The condition lever is used to select fuel on and also select low and high idle engine conditions. It is important that both the cutoff and high idle stops on the FCU are contacted. To begin rigging of the condition lever, first disconnect the rod end from the fuel control unit so that we can put the cockpit condition lever in the necessary position. The most important reference point for rigging the condition lever is the low idle position. At this position, the surface of the bracket must be horizontal, more correctly, be parallel to the fuel control centre line. This is the position where the connection of the rod end is made with the condition lever. Check that the cutoff stop is contacted when the lever is pulled in the cutoff position and the max stop is contacted at the high idle position. If there is a knob split at the high idle position, match the position of the condition lever being rigged to the maximum position of the sister engine. Then adjust the high idle stop screw out until it contacts the bracket. Note that at the maximum stop has been adjusted, the high idle speed will need to be adjusted when performing the running checks. The propeller is a key component in the engine control system, especially when any engine rigging is performed. The setting on the propeller that should be checked are the beta nuts and the feedback ring. The beta nuts adjust the flight idle blade angle of the propeller. All the nuts should be set to the exact same dimension and checked with the vernier caliper. This will prevent cycling of the carbon block and beta valve for each revolution of the propeller. For optimal operation of the beta system, the feedback ring should be verified that it has zero run out. For this, it is preferable to use a dial indicator. A feedback ring running true avoids any cycling of the carbon block and the beta valve on the propeller governor. This is a beta lever. Ensure that the carbon block assembly, the centre pin, the bushing and the attachment point for the beta cable are all in good condition before being installed. To install the beta lever, from the left hand side of the engine, slide the beta lever through the beta valve on the propeller governor Carefully place the carbon block into the feedback ring and under the guide pin. Make absolutely sure the beta lever is installed under the guide pin so it cannot pop out of the feedback ring during operation. Install the pivot pin into the beta valve. Note, the definition of the flush position varies between aircraft manufacturers. For this particular installation, this is being defined as halfway along the beta valve chamfer as shown. It is important that the beta valves on both engines are rigged exactly the same way and per the aircraft maintenance manual requirements. With the beta nuts and beta valves set the same way, the flight height or blade angles will be the same and will show the same torque for both engines.
Setting the beta valve flush position is achieved by adjusting the beta cable rod end. Adjust the rod end to obtain the flush position and safety is specified. Finally, in this section, we need to install the reset link between the beta cable and the propeller governor reset lever. To install the reset link, loosen the safety nut on the rod end and adjust until a slide fit is obtained with the beta cable. For illustration purposes, a piece of paper may be used between this stop and the reset link to verify that contact is made. Then add preload by shortening the reset link one half turn. Install the nut and bolt and safety. Propeller adjustments and the carbon block replacement must be done in accordance with the aircraft maintenance manual. The power lever moves the fuel control unit arm on the fuel control unit from the grand idle position to the maximum NG and reverse NG stop positions. Let's take a minute to talk about the power lever input arm on the fuel control unit and our friend the serrated washer. We'll take a look at the, what the serrated washer does and how it is used when you're rigging an engine. The serrated washer can be used to make both a coarse and fine fuel control unit input lever angle adjustment. This enables matching a twin engine aircraft or a fleet of aircraft. Here is the serrated washer. It has 24 serrations on the fuel control unit side and it has 25 serrations on the input lever arm side. The fine adjustment is made by holding the fuel control unit lever arm in a fixed position with the fuel control unit while turning this just the serrated washer one or more serrations clockwise or counterclockwise. The fuel control unit lever will move just 0.6 of a degree in the same direction that the serrated washer is moved for each serration it is moved. The course adjustment is when we move the FCU input lever and serrated washer together and index it one serration at the FCU. The lever angle changes 15 degrees. When rigging engines, always use a sharpie or equivalent to draw a line across the fuel control unit, serrated washer and the input lever. This becomes our reference point from which we make rigging adjustments in the engine run bay. When performing the static rigging on the aircraft, both coarse and fine adjustments of the input lever may be required in order to establish the defined lever angle as indicated in the aircraft maintenance manual. For this aircraft, 22.5 degrees. However, once that setting has been correctly established, then course adjustments will no longer be required for engine matching in the run bay. Only the fine adjustment will be required. Also, once the static rigging has been completed, the reference marks on the fuel control unit, serrator washer and the lever can be removed. They will need to be reapplied as a new reference prior to any adjustments out in the engine run bay. In this installation, the aircraft maintenance manual specifies that the fuel control unit input lever is to be rigged 22.5 degrees below the centre line of the fuel control unit. At the pickup point of the fuel control lever, which can be felt as increased resistance as the lever is lifted. If you don't have a protractor, just take a sheet of paper and fold it as shown. This is 22.5 degrees and an easy reference for you to use for the lever position. Setting up the PT6 CAM box, there are five steps for the adjustment. Number one is what we call the track point. Number two, it's the airframe input lever, the green lever. Number three is the marriage of the aircraft to the engine. Number four is the propeller CAM rear clevis. And then number five is the fuel control input lever. To establish the track point, we recommend using the thumb method. Place your thumb on the reversing cam and push forward. Move the input lever in the forward direction. The reversing cam should not move. Move the input lever back toward the idle position. The track point is defined as the position where the cam follower just begins to pull the reversing cam rearward. You will feel this as increased pressure on your thumb. You can also see it. 
Install the airframe input arm in accordance with the aircraft maintenance manual, taking extra care to ensure its angle is correct and ensure that it matches the opposite engine. The angles must be the same. Any variation between these arms on the engines will make matching engines very difficult. The right end of the power lever is connected to the airframe input lever and must be a sliding fit. Install the beta cable clevis as a sliding fit in the reversing cam hole defined in the aircraft maintenance manual. Set the interconnect rod to the length per the aircraft maintenance manual. Connect the rod end at the cam box in the hole as defined in the AMM. Carefully feel for the fuel control unit low idle pickup point. This is an important point as it defines our forward dead band. Once you have identified the pickup point, make the rod end bolt a slide fit. Then extend the rod by another half a turn. If you are rigging a newly installed engine, set the maximum reverse stop screw like the opposite engine. Otherwise, for now, leave it as set. Taking the time to rig the engines exactly the same way, whether for twins or for singles, will make the job matching engine characteristics simpler because now you have a consistent point from which to start. In the next section, we will show you how to use these adjustments to get both engines matched together. We are now ready to proceed to the engine run bay for final adjustments. For the rigging, our goal is three runs and you're done.